I'm Bob Harris of Decorative Concrete Institute. Welcome to Duraman's training and educational series for industrial and decorative flooring systems. We're getting ready to demonstrate the Lumiere Reflective Designer Epoxy Flooring System on this panel. We're going to start off by using our uh, Purdue EO2 100% uh, solids material and what we're going to do is we're going to tint it with the actual uh, Lumiere metallic pigments. It's really important when you're, when you're doing a system like this that we change the background color. What I mean by that is this is a gray concrete as you can see and if we just rolled a, a clear primer over the surface, when we came with our body coat, you would see some of that gray bleeding through. So oftentimes what we'll do is use the actual metallic pigment powder, which is what we're going to demonstrate here, or we, we might consider uh, uh, priming with a black 100% solids uh, epoxy, like uh, uh, E20. And uh, once that dries, then we come back over it with our, with our body coat, and that's when we can really uh, express our artistic flair, if you will, working with different colors, bleeding different colors, spritzing solvents to create certain effects. So what we've done is this is a two to one system. Uh, it's two parts A to one part B, and so we've already pre-weighed it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start mixing. Now, what we like to do is pre-blend the metallic powder into the A side. We'll mix that for several minutes. And then what we'll do is once that's uh, thoroughly mixed, we'll mix the B into the A, mix that for three minutes, and then we're ready to prime. Why do you prime? Well, we, we already talked about one reason that you would prime. One reason is to change the background color, but also is to seal the pores of the concrete. Oftentimes when you're working with epoxy coatings or any type of coating for that matter, you can uh, achieve what's called outgassing bubbles. And that's where the, 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 uh, the liquid of the epoxy resin is permeating down into the pores and the porosity of the concrete, and it's displacing the air. And the air only has one way to go, and that's back up through your coating. Uh, it's uh, pretty frustrating when you come back on a floor and you see that. So to eliminate or avoid that from happening, we're priming. So two reasons to, um, to avoid outgassing bubbles and to change the background color. On a large project, you can simply make a whole large batch of this material and you can put it down with a notch squeegee um, and notch squeegees come much wider and of course the, uh, the little ridges here is what dictates uh, the mill thickness that you're putting it down. So the logic would be notch squeegeeing the material down followed by a back roll for the prime coat only. Okay, We're going to just uh, dump onto the surface here and roll it down and you're typically applying this material as a primer somewhere between 10 mils up to 15 mils thick as a primer. So we're going to get busy. We're going to start mixing our uh, product up. And then, uh, if Brian, if you don't mind when you're done, if you'd bring a rag back, OK? Thank you. So here we go. Uh, once I said, we have already have our measurements 2 to 1, 2 A's to 1 B uh, of the EO2. And now we've got our uh, pre-measured metallic pigment. And we're mixing it right in to the A side. We're going to use a squirrel mixer. All right, that's good and mixed. So now what I'd like to do is we're going to come through and we're going to mix our B side right into the A. Here is where we're going to want to mix for, for roughly three minutes. Okay, we've mixed our uh, um, system here, and what we're going to do, I like to just take a stir stick and make sure that uh, we have we've have all of the uh, mix off of the sides, perhaps any metallic particles, so it's just a good idea 
to go ahead and take a stir stick and clean the sides of the buckets. So now what we're going to do is uh, we'll take this out of here. Take that out of here. Thank you. And we're simply going to start uh, applying this material with our roller. This is really important to prime like we've just discussed. As you can see, we're changing that gray background color and also it's going to really eliminate the chance for the outgassing bubbles. We're getting ready for our next step on our Lumiere Reflective Designer Epoxy Flooring System. Remember to recap what we did here is we, we uh, actually started with a profile of about three via dustless grinding with a uh, 40 grit metal bond diamond. We cleaned the residual dust and then we primed with EO2. Uh, we actually put the uh, metallic pigment into the A side if you recall, mixed that and then uh, mixed both A and B together for a minimum of three minutes and we primed the surface. Now, it's not uncommon to uh, get what we or experience what we call outgassing bubbles. This is very porous concrete, and uh, sometimes you'll see that, and it certainly happened here. So if you look, you can see, um, you know, some bubbles and blisters. And what we want to do is knock all those back flat and uh, sand it. So we've got a 100 grit sanding screen on the bottom of our floor machine here. It might take us two minutes on this whole area. What we'll do after we sand it. We're going to um, uh, vacuum the dust and then we're going to take solvent and clean the surface really clean with solvent wiping. Um, also, you know, let's say that we didn't have any of these blisters or bubbles and the concrete didn't yield that. There's really not a reason to sand it if you're within a 24 hour window. So if you exceed that 24 hour window, always sand it or if you get the bubbles or the blisters, always sand it. So we're going to demonstrate the uh, sanding of the uh, EO2 primer. Brian's going to start vacuuming right now. We'll turn that vacuum on. We've sanded off uh, with a 100 grit screen and uh, vacuumed the residual dust. Now it's time to solvent wipe. And that, this is a, an important step. It simply just gets any particulate off of the surface. We're going to be solvent wiping with, um, with acetone. Uh, usually acetone is the best solvent to use. Oftentimes I get asked, what about xylene or MEK? And the problem with that is um, those are not real um, uh, fast flashing solvents where acetone flashes off almost instantly. So once we've wiped the uh, residual down with our acetone, typically we want to let it off gas and let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes before you go with your application of um, the next step. So I'm just going to solvent wipe here. 